All right, what if my expression to you is 3x plus 6? And I'm asking you to factor this expression. And what, by the way, when I say factor, I'm trying to find the greatest common factor between both of these things. Basically, what I'm going to try to do is look at both of these terms and figure out what's really common between these two terms and then pull that number out. And it's, it's a way to kind of reverse simplify the expression, basically. You're trying to create a new expression that's the same as the original one. You're not changing anything. You're just changing the way it looks. And so you want to, to look at commonality. So there's an x here, but there's no x there. So there's no, no way, no how, that I could pull x out of this expression. There's no way, because it's not common to both things. You might say there's a 3 here and there's a 6 here, so there's nothing in common. However, 6 is really 3 times 2. So in fact, even though it doesn't look like there's anything common, I actually can pull a 3 out of this expression. So you open up a parenthesis, and you have to write down in the middle what would be left over to make it equal to what you started with. You'd have to have x plus 2. And let me show you why that's true. Because if you cover this up, and I tell you, hey, here's 3 times x plus 2. Distribute this in. We've learned about distribution so much, you should know that it's going to be 3 times x plus this, which is going to be 6. 3 times 2 is 6. So 3x plus 6. That's exactly what we have, 3x plus 6. So when you factor an expression, you're looking between your terms, you're trying to find out what's common, and you're trying to reach in there and pull everything common out. And then whatever's left over inside the parentheses has to make sense so that when you do the reverse multiplication again, if you do it, check it, you're going to get back what you started with. So you have to reach in, pull it out, and this has to make sense so that when you do the multiplication, you get what you started with. That is factoring, right? So let's do a million problems here to make sure you understand. But that is the basic concept. What if I have an expression x times y minus x times z? So what I'm doing is I'm looking, there's no numbers here, so it looks hard, but then you realize I'm looking here for things that are common. What's common here? I have an x here and I have an x here. That's the only thing common. I have no numbers and I have no other letters that are common. Since x is common, I pull it out and I open my parentheses. Whatever I write in here has to make sense so that after I do the distribution, it equals this. So once I pull it out of the first guy, the only thing left over is y. And once I pull it after, out of the second guy, the only thing left over is negative z. So this is my factorization. And if you want to check it, you just distribute this. x times y minus x times z. And that's exactly what we started with. So it takes a little bit of practice at first. But quickly, quickly, you will get the hang of it. What if we had something like t cubed plus 2 times t squared? And I wanted to factor that. Now again, I've the name of the section is factoring the greatest common factor. It means you're looking at your terms, you're finding out what's common, but really you want to pull out the largest thing you can that is also common to both terms. So you look at this and you say, well, all I have is a t cubed, and here I have a t squared. So you look and you say, well, those don't match. But then you realize that this is really, this is really t times t times t. And this, this guy is 2 times t times t. So even though it may not look like it, really, really when you look at this guy and this guy, you have two t's common to both of these terms. Two t's are common. t squared is common here. I also could factor out a t squared from there. So I'm going to factor out my t squared. I'm going to open my parentheses. What do I need to write down here to make it true? I need to write down t here plus 2. This is my factorization. And if you want to check it, just cover everything back up and distribute it in. t squared times t gives me t cubed. t squared times 2 gives me 2t. So you're reaching in, you're looking to see the, the largest common thing here. In this case, t squared is common here, and it's also wrapped up inside here. I can pull it out, and then I go and figure out what needs to be in there to make the multiplication uh, true. And ladies and gentlemen, this is really you know, the only thing to this section. There's not anything else to it. We're just going to work some problems. So r to the fourth minus r squared. What would you factor out here? Well, we can see that there's an r here, common in both terms, but how many r's? Here we have two r's. Here I have four r's. So I know that I have two, at least two r's common here, and I have two r's that are also common to that guy. So I can pull out an r squared. I can pull out two of them. 
So for the first term, I'd have to have an r squared in the middle to make 4. And here it would just be minus 1 because I pulled out all of the r squares on the outside. So I, the only thing I have left is a 1 there. Now to check it, r squared times r squared is r to the fourth. r squared times negative 1 is negative r squared. 